Welcome to Overtake. I'm Ermin, and this is a story age old as sim racing itself. You've just dived into your first real sim. Maybe it was Project Cars 2. Maybe it was Assetto Corsa. Maybe it was Grand Prix World. Or perhaps you're even ancient enough to vividly remember the day Revs came out. You've set up your sim rig, run some laps, and practiced hard at a few tracks of your choosing. You take a look at the world leaderboard and... You're 10 seconds off per lap? What could possibly be going on? Well, aside from looking into the finer points of basic driving technique with apexing, trail braking, using runoff, etc., one of the first things you're lambasted with on the online forums is, learn to drive without TC and ABS, noob. To those uninitiated, TC stands for Traction Control and ABS stands for Anti-Lock Braking System. ABS has been mandatory in road cars for a very long time as it prevents your grandmother smashing into the back of that parked truck when she plants her foot all the way through the brake pedal on her Civic with no finesse. Just like you should plant your finger all the way through our subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on any great future Overtake content. Did you like that segue? I know I did. In a non-ABS car, what tends to happen is that the wheels lock under braking and cause the car to skid along the road surface, potentially destabilizing it dangerously as well as drastically reducing the car's braking power. ABS was a compromise worked into the car to cause the brakes to pulsate when they would otherwise lock, allowing more traction to be maintained with the road surface and thus reducing braking distances in emergency circumstances. Road ABS systems are often more inefficient than simply riding the brake at the car's grip limit, a skill generally reserved for top-tier racing drivers, which your grandmother in her Civic presumably is not. TC, on the other hand, works on the throttle pedal. Primarily designed to help rear-wheel drive vehicles put power down on the ground efficiently, traction control is renowned for stopping any cars over 400 brake horsepower drifting, well, basically everywhere all the time. The drawback with road-based TC systems is that they often cut too much power and will tend to destroy your lap times. These are improving over time as manufacturers include sport modes intended for the track or spirited road trips. It would appear that in our older and more rudimentary simulators, it was often the case that disabling all assists, even factory-enabled assists or those that are intended to be run in certain race leagues, often led to quicker outcomes. This led to a somewhat confusing appropriation of knowledge in sim racing. While it's true that many rudimentary sims modeled extremely basic traction control systems, often intermittently cutting all engine power to the wheels in large intervals, the reality is that real-life TC systems, especially race-grade ones, are more nuanced than sublime. A car intended to be run with TC in real life is actually quicker using that system than not. It's only recently, with the advent of sims such as Assetto Corsa Competizione, that we've had race traction control systems modeled with such accuracy as to actually reflect this real life behavior more closely. In order to demonstrate this, I'm going to show you three laps of the legendary Laguna Seca in the McLaren 720S GT3. One, using the assistive systems, set fairly low. Another, maxing out the assistive systems. And a final lap, with no assistive systems whatsoever. If this goes as I think it will, the lap time should get progressively slower as we go along. Also, try and say assistive systems three times really fast. Assistive systems, assistive systems, assistive systems. Okay, kicking off with our main setting, the one that I would usually race with an ACC, 1TC, 3 ABS on the McLaren 720S here at Laguna Seca. You would jump between 1 and 2TC, usually depending on what the condition of the tires is. Here we go, slightly overshooting the apex of the first corner, but turning it back around, getting on the throttle, kind of using the TC as a bit of a, as a bit of a slip catch. You can kind of play with the rear end of the car on throttle now, as I do right there. Helps you rotate the car while accelerating. One of the great things about mid-engine cars, you can see as soon as I cross the apex, I get on the power. The ABS, of course, holding me down, stopping me from locking the tires. I'm, I'm mashing the brake, as you can see, fully, fully kicking in the ABS there. Getting on the power nice and early allows me to rotate the car without worrying about spinning out mid-corner. So dab on the brake, catch the hook on the inside, straight on the power, no worries about slipping out. The TC has got us. These are very, very aggressive assist settings, but they're very, very fast at the same time. Here we go through the, the mighty corkscrew. Pretty reasonable line as we head on down and coast. Try and nick the apex there, straight on the power. 
It's one of the great things about mid-engine cars. You can drive very textbook, shift down a gear, slightly overshot the apex, slipped a bit through there, got a little bit out on the sand. Nothing too tragic. We're coming back around. Ever so slight overshoot on the last corner. Went a little bit wider than I'd like. As you can see, the delta is dropping down. We've lost about one tenth there, I would say. Still for a reasonable lap time of 121.9. Okay, kicking off with our max assist section. So we've got the TC dimed all the way to 12 out of 12. ABS dimed all the way to 12 out of 12. Let's get on it. Let's see how this works. Ideally, this should be very, very easy to drive, but not too fast. We hit the brakes hard at the three marker. Catch the apex this time using uh, engine braking. Very hard to get on the power. Oh, you, can, you can hear it struggling. The TC is interfering with the corner exit so much. Oh, the entire way through, even in a moderate speed corner. See, the TC is just pulsing all the way through the corner. The moment you put the power down, it's a terrible setting to run. I mean, it's very, very, very noob friendly. If you've got young children who are maybe learning how to sim race, this might be a good way to start them. You can see the Delta is already suffering. We're already going up to 0.8. We catch the nook in there. Oh, I'm finding that the drive itself is actually not too bad. I don't think the lines are terrible. I think it could even be a better quality drive than the one with less assist, which is not too surprising given that the assists actually help you drive, but unfortunately rob you of precious tents as we get a second, second in the red on the Delta. The throttle absolutely being punished. That There's no power delivery to those rear wheels as we go through the last corner. Oh, just nothing. It's just struggling. It's just like ganking its way up through the revs. Absolutely awful. Would not recommend for a lap time of 123.4. And now for our final drive, no assists at all, and that that is a great start so far. So one would think, okay, lower assist is way quicker than high assist, so surely no assist at all is going to be the best possible outcome. Well, nope. This kind of gives you an idea of what to expect here. ACC with a more realistic modeling of GT3 cars and the way that they respond to assists generally means that when you turn the assists off entirely, you're going to have a pretty bad time. As we go into the first braking zone, braking nice and early at four, kind of locking the wheels, shooting way out deep onto the marbles. Yep, collected all the marbles on our nice slicks. Beautiful, absolutely brilliant, exactly what we want. Working our way through T2 here, not too bad. Mid-speed corners, okay. That's usually where the assists don't do too much. Delta is nice and solid here, as you can see. Re well, reasonably solid. Haven't lost too much time there. All right, going up to another relatively high-speed corner. However, banking uphill as we shoot out wide a little bit. Oh, the car! No, it snaps on me. It just does that nebulous drift thing that ACC loves so much. And believe it or not, with the TC off, it will do it oh so much. You just... There's no sense of security. There's no blanket of security. Normally, when you come out of the corner, you just plant the throttle and the TC sorts out the rest for you in a GT3. Nope, nope, can't, not even with the earlier brake zone coming up to the corkscrew, almost overshot, oh my god, almost spun out going downhill, it's an absolute train wreck, <laughs> using no traction control and no ABS in this McLaren here at Laguna Seca, you can see I overshoot the apex nicely there, coming up to the final corner with a nice three second gap on our delta, beautiful, alright, almost up to four seconds, oh yep, that's, that's what we want. All right, now that we've warmed up the tires with a burnout, let's go in for another lap. Let's see what we can do. That was actually the first time I ever drove a GT3 in ACC with no assists, so it was a very novel experience. It turns out it's very hard not to lock the tires. Here we go, hard braking zone. Trying to, yes, using the engine braking a lot more this time. I am pensive. I've, I hit the brakes early. I'm rotating. I'm feeling it out with the throttle. I don't trust first gear anymore. We dip it down second, and we're still okay. We're still okay. No TC, of course. I'm feathering the throttle. You can see I'm not planting it down as I normally would. Uh, just feeling it out. Feeling it out. And yes, okay. We've managed to commit to the throttle again. Already a second down, about a third of the way through the track. Absolutely brilliant. All right, banked uphill as we just go wide. We absolutely go wide. The car snaps on me mid-corner. Lost an absolute ton of time there. Brilliant. Love it. Dipper gear, go in there. That's that's relatively safe. You have gravity helping you there. A lot of downforce. It's all good. Now, the moment of truth. The braking zone for the corkscrew. Uh, oh, no, nah, and we overshoot again. It is so difficult over those bumps to finesse the brake to not lock on you and to feel it in the sim. My lord, not the easiest thing in the world. 
All right, as we approach the second last corner now, drop a gear, turn in, try not to go too wide. We've done okay. We've done okay there. We're only about three seconds behind. Hard on the brakes at two. Turn in, almost there, yeah, locked the tires. We've got a bit of a snap. This is very dangerous first gear. We don't like first gear with no TC. And shooting up to the finish line for a time of 125.4. Not that much slower than full assist, surprisingly. Well, that was wild. You can see the difference is immense when it comes to GT3 cars specifically designed to use traction control. That's not to say that in some road cars with more rudimentary systems, you can't get a quicker time by getting the tail out with the throttle, but it does require quite some driving ability and is increasingly becoming more difficult as modern cars are beginning to rely on these systems as part of their overall balancing. Do bear in mind the difference between sim level and car level assists. Also, note the differences in these systems between hardcore simulators such as ACC and Simcade titles. Some sims, such as the Codemasters F1 series, will allow artificial ABS and traction control, which are dialed to make the cars easier to drive for newer drivers, but will rob experienced ones of precious lap time. This is what the community would often refer to with older, more rudimentary renderings of these systems in sims. In proper simulators, however, with accurate renderings of these systems, in cars designed to run them, you should almost always aim to keep them on. This is something I've been wanting to get off my chest for a while, because it's the equivalent of what we call bro science in the fitness community. Essentially, self-perpetuating myths espoused by industry gatekeepers that are not really relevant any longer. So next time you load up your favorite GT3 sim, if it's a good sim, you shouldn't be afraid, or think any less of yourself for dialing a few points of TC and ABS. Don't worry, it's how the actual race car drivers do it, and it's certainly how we at Overtake do. Until next time, smash that sub to get notified of future sim racing content, and I'll see you all later.